What's going on fellow reef builders and in my attempt to bring you along with as much of the happenings here at the Reef Builder Studio. Today, I want to basically involve you as much as I can in doing some work on my 100 gallon Innovative Marine EXT soft coral tank. This was one of the first large displays set up here at the studio, um, especially with a concept in mind. And I've kind of left it alone for quite a while. So it's time for me to do two things. Uh, one, I need just to get my hands in there, just kind of inspect a lot of the corals. Um, there's some filler corals in there that need to come out. There's some fast growing corals in there that need to be trimmed up. Um, but most of all, I just kind of need to commune with the reef tank uh, for a little bit and install some brand new uh, LED reef aquarium lights. So currently I have, uh, let's see the, Illumagic Vitamin E Actinic LED strip light, uh, but really the primary light is going to be these uh, Aqualumination Hydra 52 HDs. These have been on this tank for, I mean, since the beginning, and they have done such an excellent job. Um, these soft corals, man, they really appreciate that wider light and that brighter light. But what we're gonna do is we're going to put these brand spanking new Hydra 64 HDs uh, fresh off the factory line. I'm not gonna do a thorough like a unboxing because I did like a whole deep dive into what's different about the Hydra 64 HD on reefbuilders.com. So if you wanna know more about how this light is different from its uh, brother, the 52, uh, go ahead and reefbuilders.com. I'll put the link down below to the kind of like pre-review hands-on of the Hydra uh, 64. Okay, so before I get my hands in there, I kind of want to show you what this tank is looking like today before I make some changes, before I install the new light and kind of show you some of the things that I'm looking forward to, to doing with this particular tank. So um, it's a four foot tank. It's pretty much dominated by softies. Uh, I will link to the original video of this tank, the original like kind of feature video of this tank. Um, but just to refresh your memory, uh, this whole side right here is all soft corals. And over here, there's just kind of a small patch of Duncans in the back and there's some turban areas here on the right side. But um, some of the things I need to kind of groom and kind of work on is, uh, for example, this toe stool leather right here has gone a little bit too big for where he's at. So he was kind of small and really fancy. So we're gonna take him and kind of move him probably down here with some of his toadstool brothers. Uh, this Kenya tree right here is uh, virtually always, always just about to touch something. And it's actually kind of surprising how much it can actually do some damage. Um, here you can kind of see where it occasionally touches the Sinularia. Um, there's a little bit of warfare. Speaking of which, this Sinularia had, was a filler. It had kind of greenish, greenish polyps, but he was always just kind of a filler coral just to kind of help uh, round out what's uh, happening with this tank here. There's a, here's a rare look at this tank from the side. This is one of my uh, long polyp leathers. And by the end of the day, those tentacles should be like almost twice as long. Um, oh, here's a really cool look at um, how this tank is aquascaped. Basically, I have the two MP40s just blasting down the back wall of this tank with no rock obstruction. So my plan has been to basically glue little shelves to the back or put magnets on the back. And the reason I can glue them is because the Innovative Marine EXT line mostly has like a black acrylic sheet on the back. So that is quite handy. Um, let's see, what are some other things I wanted to do? Oh, here's a really cool example of, um, the, these are the Astro Leathers. And if you look at that tile, there's three plugs. There's three plugs with no leather corals on them. So the Astro Leathers tend to just kind of walk off um, slowly over time. I guess they don't really like to attach permanently. Um, the Turban Areas have done super duper well. I don't think there's much to change over on this side of the tank. The Duncans are super beefy. I know that this guy's gonna need to be fragged, but I'm gonna feel it out as I'm going along to see if it's time to uh, kind of frag them in half, just so like the, the other half of them that's kind of growing underneath the coral can get a little bit uh, more room for light and for water flow. And uh, we'll probably put 
a few things here on the back just because I do have a lot of extra soft corals um, in the staging tanks over there that are ripe for putting in here, but I definitely, definitely do not have room to put them all in there. I definitely don't have room to put them all in there. So this is just gonna be kind of like feeling it out on what makes sense to put in this tank. So um, man, I've been waiting to do this video so I could give this tank some love for quite a while. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, softies deserve a lot more love. So let's get our hands wet. you guys it's been about four weeks so a whole solid month since I installed the Hydra 64s replaced the Hydra 52s and I was so in love with my 52s I was actually a little bit apprehensive about switching to anything else you know you really get used to the light that you have but I ran both of them side by side and uh, you know it was really just a seamless upgrade. Um, the colors is a little bit different, but again, you get really, really used to the light that you have. And since it's been four weeks, the changes that I had initially made to this tank to uh, just kind of rejigger some things, reposition some corals, uh, I already need to do it again. Um, so let me show you the tank, how it looks today, and uh, some of the things that I need to, uh, I guess, get on top of to uh, just keep this tank in a beautiful, pristine condition. This is my first favorite reef tank here at the studio. I've just really enjoyed it. It's, you know, it's partially because you don't see people giving any respect or love to the soft corals nearly enough. Or, you know, they might have one or two token soft corals in their tank, um, but having this aquarium that's really, really dedicated to the softies um, has been more fun than I could imagine. You know, the corals, they have a lot of character, you know, as far as like opening up throughout the day. So like this guy, you know, he starts out really small. And so I can see completely through the tank when the lights first come off, come on. And then he opens up and just kind of obscures everything behind him. And um, but yeah, this tank is doing extremely, extremely well. I did a big water change and killed off a lot of coralline on the back glass and it's already coming back. But uh, let me kind of show you the tank as it is now. I mean, it's not really that different. The Hydra 64s, one thing that I really, really love about them is that um, 
the uh, LED puck right here is just a, like a little bit recessed. And so you really have to get like a deep, deep angle uh, for it to shine in your light. So it's almost like a built up shroud. So with the Hydra 52s before, the glare would reach all the way up here. And now it's all the way kind of down here. You can almost see just that gradient uh, right there on the back wall. So um, <laughs> this is absolutely one of the problem child right here. He was over here at the beginning of video. Now he's down here and he's already too big once again. Um, also the flow, the flow changes in here a lot. And so like sometimes this coral is just totally blowing to the back and sometimes it's blowing to the front. Um, but now that I've kind of done this update video, I'm gonna be able to like kind of get, get on it and like stay on it a whole lot more. So. So you're probably wondering what are some of the differences I've seen between the Hydra 52 and the Hydra 64. The color is just a slightly bit different, just a little bit cooler. If you didn't put them side by side, you really wouldn't notice the difference. But so I took a par meter and the Hydra 52 reaches just a little bit more higher peak intensity. So up here, up here in this top zone, like this top third, I've always divided my, my zones into thirds. So we got top third, middle third, bottom third. So the top third, <laughs> where there's no corals, right at the bottom, just grazing about 400 par here. And that's gonna be about uh, six to eight inches under the water. And with the Hydra 64s now, um, it's right, it's closer to 375 here at the top. But um, at full 12 inches down, right in the middle, it's still hitting about 350 uh, micromoles of par. So that's the, you know, that's the thing that uh, Aqualumination has really been trying to do with their lights. Actually, Aqua Illumination and Ecotech Marine and some of the better light makers, instead of trying to hit those super high uh, peak par numbers, it's more about distributing that light. So it's impossible to capture on video. I tried for a while, that's why it took me four weeks to finish up this video from the beginning, is uh, trying to demonstrate or illustrate on video how the, um, the Hydra 52 was just a little bit more focused and now with the 64, um, it's just so much more even light distribution from the front to the back. So the, the, the primary place that I could tell is you know the back corals were a little bit dimmer and then this front, front, very front area was just a little bit dimmer. But now down here at the bottom, it's like 150 to 200 micromoles of par. In the center, it's a little brighter because it's in between two, uh, two of the lights. So I didn't know how aqua illumination was gonna improve on the Hydra 52, but they really have with the Hydra 64. And I'm actually really looking forward to basically repeating this video format by putting two primes here in the center tank and then one Hydra, what are they up to now? 32 on the end tank right there. Um, yeah, so uh, I, got, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, next time you're at the fish store and you see some soft corals, just give them a little bit closer look. Um, just give them a little bit more consideration and treat them with some respect. Don't just put them down in the bottom or at the ends. Give them some place where they're gonna get a lot of light and a lot of flow and you're, you know, it's gonna add a real nice contrast to your tank that is probably full of stony corals except for zoanthids and mushrooms. So, Thanks for joining me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.